It's Master Chef. I'm here to change my life. Searching for Britain's best amateur cook. You come here to win. Anybody comes here to win. 136 contestants who all believe they have undiscovered talent. It's the amateur cook's accolade, isn't it, to win Master Chef? Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give you 50 minutes, one plate of food. Let's cook. These six amateur cooks have one shot at staying in the competition. They have to create an exceptional dish from today's mystery ingredients, which include pork fillet, butternut squash, blackberries, mushrooms, arborio rice, sage, whole grain mustard, cauliflower, cooking apples, ginger, and potatoes. Project manager James from Salisbury has only been cooking seriously for the last four years. I'm a perfectionist. I like to get things right. If I get it wrong, I go back and I'll put it right. James, you're an IT project manager. I am, yes. So we understand totally why you want to get out of there as fast as possible. A change of career wouldn't be an awful thing. Do you have an ambition with food? You eat in so many places and you wonder, you know, how much love has been put into that food. You know, I'd like a small place of my own. I like for each plate of food to come out, you know, fantastic with a bit of love, a bit of passion in it. Fabian has managed over 15 restaurants but longs to work in the kitchen. Fabian, where did this love of food come from? My dad is a chef. And I've got uh, cousins and uncles and aunties, all of them in the catering industry. Because I've been working with food since I'm a kid, really, I've been with food since always, I, I've got quite a good food knowledge. Tour operator Tom would love to combine his passion for travel and cooking to become a food journalist. I'm naturally very competitive. I compete against myself as much as I compete against anyone else. I have high standards, especially in my food. When were you first inspired to cook, Tom? My dad was my great food hero. I was just standing by, pulling his apron strings and picking up everything that he did. And he never cooked the same dish twice, so a baptism of fire, if anything. <laughs> Mum of three, Jo, from Devon, manages her husband's dental practice. I give up most of my life to the business, my husband, children, dog, but I don't actually do or achieve a great deal for myself. My dream would be a small country house hotel. And your husband would run it, would he, and you'd cook? No, he's a dentist, so we'd bung him in like a wing of the property. You'd have a country house hotel with a dentist. Yeah. <laughs> come down, get your teeth done. Good food, great teeth, be fantastic. You have 20 minutes left. 43-year-old Kev runs a successful business, but has always had other ambitions. I was a graphic designer. I also was a fairly good cook, and, and I could have gone down that route. This is the, the other opportunity. I'm a creative person, so generally my kitchens are a nightmare. The food's everywhere, but the food tastes nice. Essex-based Amy has been cooking for her family since the age of 12. My mum and dad would often be working late. I had to feed my brother and sister. That was a, a fabulous way to learn. Nowadays, I'm cooking at home for my little one. I work at home, so I'm, I'm at home a lot. So I, I'm lucky enough to be able to, you know, sit on the computer, cook while I work. Amy, you look actually quite chaotic, but obviously you love I to cook. I don't need to be. I think I'm just a bit nervous. You have two minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Your time is up. Project manager James has made pork in a mustard, cream and sage sauce with caramelised apple and sautéed potatoes. Your pork is cooked very well and I love the sauce with that apple. Well done. Thank you. I like the apple and the pork and the mustard sauce because it's rich. I don't like the fried potatoes because I don't believe potatoes fried in oil go with a creamy sauce. Restaurant manager Fabian hopes to show off tricks of the trade with his medallions of pork, mashed potato, sautéed mushrooms and cauliflower cheese. This piece of pork here is just raw. What is this? It's a kind of a mashed potato. It's lumpy, gluey, and like plaster. No. And not nice potato. Uh, no. If you were served that, would you send it back to a restaurant kitchen? I wouldn't let it go out. So why would you serve it to us as judges of mushrooms? Just by pure stupidity, really, I think. Okay. Will tour operator Tom's butternut squash risotto and pork loin be enough to impress the judges? I quite like the zingy flavour of your risotto. Um, it is a bit stodgy, but I think it's flavoured very well. I think it's cooked very well. Your pork is nicely cooked and it's moist and the flavour of sage in there is a good one. The design of your dish wasn't great, Tom, but your flavours are very good. Yeah, good. Dental practice manager Joe has created pan-fried pork with blackberry reduction on cream potato and butternut squash. That reduced blackberry is great against the sweetness of the butternut squash and then a really good mashed potato sitting underneath. And I like it a lot. Thank you. Very unusual combination, but it works perfectly well. And that is wizard mashed potato. Okay. Can games designer Kev win over the judges with his fried pork and ginger, Mediterranean vegetables and butternut squash? I don't actually really like it very much. No. The ginger's a mistake because you are telling people it's oriental and what you have got is a Mediterranean Asian dish. That is very confused. Very confused. Legal project manager Amy is serving pork medallions with butternut squash puree, caramelised apple and cauliflower cheese. What doesn't work on that plate is the apple and the cauliflower cheese sauce. But for me what does work is that sweet pork with the sage and that sweet butternut squash. Really like that side of the plate. I just don't like the apple and the cauliflower. I like the way you've cooked your pork. Apple, squash, cauliflower and cream is too much. Six contestants. All of them cooked the pork. Some very well, some not so well. Kev was very, very nervous, but he never had a clear idea of where his food was going. He said it was Mediterranean vegetables with Asian flavours. Well, that was never going to be right. The whole thing was mismatched. It was, it was, design was bad from the start. Kev goes home. Is it fair to say Fabian should go home as well? He thought he got his timings right. The pork, though, was raw. That mashed potato, unfortunately, was probably the worst mashed potato that you and I have ever seen on MasterChef. Fabian is out. For me, I've got one definite in. James, I think, actually can cook. He got real depth of flavour in that sauce with the pork. I really loved that creamy mustard sauce. But chips and cream sauce? No, no, no. I really like Joe. The idea of actually getting blackberry jam, pork and butternut squash to work, yeah, good cook, good cook. So Joe stays in? 
Yeah, I agree. And that leaves us with Tom and Amy. I'm not sure with, that, with Amy's dish. I mean, all of those things went into my mouth as separate entities and they tasted like separate entities. It didn't belong together, but actually, everything on Amy's plate was cooked very well. And I liked the texture of that butternut squash. If I could do the whole thing over again, I know I could do better today. So, yeah, I'm definitely kicking myself. I'd much rather eat Tom's food than Amy's. I mean, it was a whole dish. His pork was cooked very nicely. Putting the sage on there worked, and it tasted very good. But it is a risotto by design with a lump of pork on top. I think I've done enough to go through. If what we're here for is to prove that we can cook, I think I've proved that. Tom or Amy, you know who I want. Fabian, Kev, I'm sorry you're leaving us. James, Joe, congratulations, you're staying with us. Thank you. It's now between Amy and Tom. Amy. Congratulations, you're staying with us. Sorry, Tom, you're leaving us. OK, so, yeah, congratulations. Well that feels amazing. I'm just ecstatic. I'm delighted to be through. The first battle has been won. Uh, the war's yet to go. Let's, let's see how I get on. Now I'm here, I just think, yeah, I'm here, I'm hungry for it, I want to do it, and I want to win it. Now for them, it is a professional kitchen and paying customers. Who's going to really show us what they've got? Who is going to cope with that pressure? Out of the frying pan and into the fire. It's day two, and Joe, James and Amy arrive at Roast, where head chef Lawrence Keogh specialises in British cooking. Today, the contestants will be under the supervision of head sous chef Gemma Tooley. We do British seasonality food here. Uh, we've got 130 booked for lunch today, so if you're ready, let's get cracking. In service, Dev and mum of three, Joe, will be cooking the leg of lamb with crushed potatoes and red currant sauce. I just need to keep focused. I think after a few I'll be OK, but I don't know. IT project manager James is responsible for the grilled Cornish mackerel with gooseberries, elderflower and corn salad. I think it's going to be a real knack to get that piece of fish cooked correctly. The last thing I want to happen is for me to get into a vicious circle where I'm getting it wrong. Legal project manager Amy has been put in charge of the herring rose on toast with white wine and butter sauce. Looking forward to the orders coming in now and getting my section completely ready so I'm on top of it. It's midday, and as diners arrive, lunchtime service begins. On order and straight out, please. One mackerel, one small herring rose. Yes, chef. Watch on the amount of wine yes. that you're putting there. You don't want to boil them. OK. I'll get rid of them and start again, huh? OK. I added too much wine, so this time I'm going to get it right. OK, let's go, Amy. They've been waiting now 10 minutes for their starters. Yes, chef. Over at the grill, James is finding that his mackerel requires a delicate touch. You can see it's coming through now. See the lines come in. So pick it up, yeah, pick it up and turn it. Stop. Straight down, straight down. Now you see, now you've broken the towel. You have to get another one. Let's go. Yeah, well, this one's going to be perfect. Let's go, because the table's waiting, yeah? While James gets another mackerel on, Joe is getting to grips with the timings of her lamb dish. Okay, how long are the next two lamb? Um, two minutes. Two minutes. I'm timing the first one on that one and the other one on my watch. So that I don't think that's been rested. Is that the one that's just come out? They're raw in the middle because you're not resting them long enough. Right. Okay. Okay. 
It's halfway through service, and with the restaurant now full, all three contestants are struggling. One herring rose, one no starter to follow, one mackerel, one leg of lamb. Yes, sir. And as herring orders fly in, Amy's problems continue. This is going to split. It's going to split. You can see it's splitting. It just means it's too hot, so you need to get something in there to cool it down, okay. yeah? Sorry. Make sure you do a new piece of toast, Amy, yeah? Because the one's been sitting there. Okie dokie. Gonna have to do this again as well. Yep. Start again, huh? Yeah, I'm starting all over again. I didn't have the toast ready, so I'm starting again. Back at the grill, James is still having problems keeping his mackerel in one piece. Oh, my God. This one, James, you've cost me enough on mackerel today. Yes, chef. Tough day in the office, put it that way. But eventually he gets his plates to the pass. Two mackerel. Lovely. Just stay calm, yeah? Yes, yeah, sure. It's fine, there's no rush. And after undercooking her lamb earlier, Joe is also feeling the pressure. I've got five on, so it's all a bit. Ooh but soon has it cooked to perfection. Two lamb. Perfect, well done. Spot on this time. Well done. And at the end of an intense two-hour lunch service, Amy finally gets things right. It was lovely that time, yeah? Thank you. OK, thank you, everyone. That's service over for today. James seemed quite confident at the start, but unfortunately he dropped and messed up a few times on the fish. Nearly every table he did something wrong. If I didn't get anything wrong, then, you know, I wouldn't be human. Give me another couple of services here, I'd be 100% every time. Amy was slow, and then when it got busy, she sort of crumbled a bit. Yeah, I'm starting to... When you're in the heat of the kitchen, it's not that easy at all. I still would like to be a professional chef. Uh, nothing has put me off by being here, no. No. I think Jo was nervous at the start, but she steadily picked up, and at the end, I was very pleased with Jo. She had the hardest section as well, and the hardest dish to prepare. I think she was solid. This has been a real learning curve today. Real learning curve. And I think I can only get better and go for it. The contestants have been on their feet for six hours, but their day is far from over. Back at MasterChef HQ, they will need to demonstrate faultless cooking. Ladies and gentlemen, you three have got the same opportunity to become a quarter-finalist. One hour. Let's cook. Yesterday, legal project manager Amy added too many elements to her pork dish. Can she now impress with her own two courses? Amy? Yes. Uh, what are you going to cook for us today? Today I'm making a butternut squash ravioli with a basil, butter sauce and chocolate fondant. More people have knocked themselves out with spoiled fondants than any other dish. I can get it right at home, so hopefully I can get it right here. Classic recipes should deliver, but they have to be absolutely perfect. IT project manager James sailed through the invention test, but struggled in the pro kitchen. Will he be able to redeem himself by producing two faultless plates of food? What are you cooking today, James? Some chicken breast uh, with uh, lemon and herb butter mustard mash and uh, a white wine and garlic sauce and then uh, cherry clafouti and some vanilla cream. Cherry clafouti, classic French pudding with cherries and a, and a custard, but the chicken dish is a bit sort of made up. Is that how you cook normally? What I'm hoping to put together here is some great combinations of flavours. I think that the elements of this are absolutely quite classic. Are you good enough for quarterfinal? If I get it right today, yeah. We have mustard, 
white wine sauce, herbs, chicken and ham. All big flavours all coming together. The balance of that is going to be very, very difficult. I do wonder if we can do it. You are halfway. Devon mum of three, Joe, showed experimental flair in the first round, combining pork and blackberries. Can she repeat it here? What are you going to cook for us, Joe? Sea bass on some samphire with a crab and saffron sauce and some potatoes. And roasted rhubarb with star anise, orange and sabillon. OK, Joe. Yesterday we saw somebody very, very calm. Quite happy, giggly. Today, somebody with steely determination looking to go further in this competition. I don't know where it's come from. It's just, I've come this far. I want to I get to the next bit. Joe's dessert. Rhubarb, star anise, orange and sabillon. Wow. If that works, it's going to be absolutely beautiful. If it works. You've got one minute left, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Time's up. Amy's hopes of a quarterfinal place rest on her butternut squash ravioli with a basil and butter sauce and pine nuts, followed by chocolate fondant served with raspberries and cream. Your pasta is perfect and paper thin. Your flavours are rich from that basil, uh, the saltiness of the parmesan cheese and the sweetness that comes from that butternut squash. I think it's very, very good. Oh. It's as light as a feather. That is really clever, skillful cooking. You should be very, very proud of yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Amy, your chocolate fondant. Starting to collapse. Don't know if that's good or bad. I think it's looking more like underdone cake than actually the ooziness that needs to come from a fondant. The richness of that cream and the raspberries and the deep chocolate, absolutely right. But actually what we have is an undercooked chocolate pudding. You knew the risk and it didn't quite work for you, Amy. It tastes absolutely delightful. Its texture needs to be a little bit firmer. Project manager James has made breast of chicken with prosciutto and a lemon tarragon butter, served with French beans and mustard mash, followed by cherry clafouti. You've cooked everything really well. It needs a sauce. It was designed to have a sauce. Um, timing issues. The idea of that sharp citric lemon against creamy mashed potato, I find a little bit disturbing. You can't even taste the chicken. What you can taste is lemon and tarragon. Let's try your graffiti. That, my friend, is undercooked. Yeah. It's not a graffiti. Clafuti is, is a batter, but it's sweet and it's sticky and it holds that fruit in place. But this is more like a baked custard. You are on your way to pudding heaven. But it's got to be firmer. Yeah. Joe has cooked pan-fried sea bass with a saffron and crab sauce served with samphire and crushed potatoes, followed by roasted rhubarb with star anise and orange zest, served with a sabayon, which is a light custard. Wowee. I think it's lovely. That 
salty crab, the depth that comes from that sea bass, which is perfectly cooked, sour, salty samphire underneath, and that rich saffron sauce. Fish, crab, saffron is delightful. I would like either the samphire or the buttery potatoes, not both. From sea bass to rhubarb. You have a really lovely, deep, rich flavour of that masala inside your sabion. And the rhubarb is cooked really nicely. I think the orange rind on there is a mistake. You've got sharp rhubarb with a tang of sweetness. You've got a little bit of masala heat and softness coming up in there, but the orange peel is overpowering. Three amateur cooks and some very, very good food. James has only started to cook three or four years ago, and I think today it shows all that lemon and tarragon inside that chicken. The chicken couldn't survive against those big flavours. Promising a sauce for your chicken and not getting your, your sauce up is, is an issue. The clafouti, that was sloppy, really sloppy. Nice flavour in the clafouti, but not cooked properly, and for me, not a true clafouti. I was so very nearly there, that it would just take that one small push to, to absolutely nail it and to get those dishes absolutely correct. So James is out. We now discuss Joe and Amy. We've got two cooks who, although have made mistakes, are really gifted. Joe is coming today with actually quite exciting food. Joe was able to blend saffron, crab, samphire, and sea bass on one plate. I mean, that girl really worked her socks off. I liked the saffron crab on the sea bass, but her dessert didn't work. That orange peel and that star anise was purely there for the visual. The dessert wasn't quite there, but the concept is right. She's cooking interesting food, taking the risks and pushing it that little bit further. I would absolutely love to get through to the next round, just to keep showing that I can do something different. Amy really surprised me. I just didn't expect it. That ravioli was maybe the best ravioli I've tasted on MasterChef. I really liked the metallicness of the basil and the sweetness inside of the, of the squash. I thought it was lovely. Fantastic ravioli, paper thin, nice sweet filling, then a fondant, perfectly presented, but it was undercooked. She only really had to leave that one in the oven for another five to ten minutes, and it would have been perfect. The flavours were right. John, I think she's a talent. When I got the feedback about the pasta, I had to hold back um, tears of happiness. It was like, oh, I'm so happy. I felt like hugging them. I think it's a really difficult decision. Joe, Amy. We're going to keep both of you in the competition. You are both quarter finalists. <laughs> Sorry, James. Congratulations. It's great that we've both got through because we're sort of on our journey together now. It's really given me a confidence boost. I think that's what I've been lacking is the confidence. So, yeah. Mm. I'm ecstatic, I can't believe it. I've really got her up my game now and just really go for it. They are both talented, they both have really good skills. But we still have plenty of cooks to see. Who else has the skill to match those two absolute stars? Welcome to MasterChef. Ladies and gentlemen, one great plate of food, 50 minutes. Let's cook. These six amateurs now have one shot at staying in the competition. They must create an exceptional dish from any of today's mystery ingredients, which include crab, prawns, noodles, phyllo pastry, coconut milk, chilies, ginger nuts, 
and chocolate. Birmingham-based Liz has put her food dream on hold for 18 years. Liz, why are you here on MasterChef? I just want, I've always wanted to be on here. I did go to catering college when I was 16, got pregnant, um, ended up having my daughter, and then that just stopped. So does that mean that, that this is a chance for you for the first time to actually realise your dream again? Yeah, even if it meant me just working in a kitchen as a commie chef, it would mean anything, to, everything to me. Now my daughter's 18, definitely the time for me to go ahead and follow my dream. She can look, she can look after herself now, so it's a case for me to do something for me. Double bass playing Matt has two loves in life, food and jazz. My ideal dream would be owning a restaurant with a kind of jazz club attached to it. I can't see my life without music, but likewise, I can't really see my life without food as well. Matt, you must be quite an adventurous cook because right now on your bench, I see pastry, I see chocolate and I see chilli. Um, yeah. I try to be adventurous. Uh, if you like that, that's great. If you don't, and I've, at least I've been true to myself. Ladies and gentlemen, you are halfway. You've got just 25 minutes left. Garden designer Joe discovered a love of food four years ago. It sort of really turned on the fire of cooking for me and going to Italy three times a year and seeing how fantastic food can be just opened up a new world to me. If you did win MasterChef, yes. what would you then go and do? Well, I'm very involved in gardening, I mean, that's my job. And I, my idea would be to have a kitchen garden restaurant and to be able to use all my gardening skills and plant identification skills going into the food. Office manager Darren dreams of setting up a private catering company. The reason I'm here is for me. It's my opportunity to change my life. Who do you cook for right now, Darren? At the moment, I cook mainly for my family and I do dinner parties for friends. So you've got lots of people telling you how good you are? It's easy for friends and family to tell you how good you are. Now I want people who know about food to tell me whether it's a wasted dream or whether it's time to. Ready, go. Although Charlotte has built up a successful jewellery business from scratch, she's ready for a career change. So many people have always said to me, I don't know how you ended up doing jewellery, because I love food. Where's your love of cooking come from, Charlotte? My mum, probably. Uh, she's generally an English cook. My nan's steak and kidney pudding lady and only uses salt and pepper. And then my dad's part Italian, so a bit of a broad range. London-based Ben likes to push himself in the kitchen. The side of cooking that I enjoy is the creative side, I suppose, and I do like being experimental, but stuff goes wrong sometimes. <laughs> Ben, you have lots of bowls, lots of boiling pans. Lots of mess. Do you have any idea of what you're going to cook for us? Well, I was planning on making some little crabby little mousse balls, like quenelle type things, and they're just not holding together, and I'm slightly panicking. Are you a good cook? Normally, yeah. <laughs> but it's all going slightly wrong at the moment. You've only got two minutes left. Two minutes to get your food on the plates. Step away from your benches, please. Your time is up. First up, it's Birmingham-based Liz, who has cooked a noodle and prawn broth with fish sauce and lemongrass. Lovely prawns, cooked perfectly, really well balanced, but that broth is too thin and milky. It's really wet in there. It's between a bowl of soup and a, and a noodle dish, which makes it really hard to eat. But I've got to say, it's lovely big flavours. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Jazz musician Matt is serving a chocolate pot with sweet chili and shortbread. Love that biscuit. I think the chocolate pot is divine. Quite what the chili jam's doing on there is anyone's guess. Because the chilli is on top, I was looking forward to a little bit of spice to go with that chocolate. But it's not there, and that's quite disappointing. I think if you're going to put chilli with chocolate, have the courage of your convictions and do it. Garden designer Joe has cooked a prawn and coriander quiche with baked peppers and a sauce of prawn and cream. Really soft, buttery, well-made, beautiful short crust pastry with a subtle filling of rich prawns and egg and coriander. Really nicely made, Joe. Really nicely made. Thanks. You know how to make your own pastry. You know how to make a quiche. It makes me wonder what else you might know. Ex-office manager Darren has made a white chocolate cheesecake with caramelised pears. I like the concept and to an extent I like the flavours. But your cheesecake is not set enough. Your biscuit base is all lumpy and crumbling and by the time I get to the next mouthful, I've got no pear left which means we've lost that wonderful balance of flavour. Flavours on the cheesecake are good, but it needs more pear. Jewellery designer Charlotte has made a crispy crab and prawn parcel on spinach and roast peppers. Nice little crisp parcel in there with really sort of deep flavoured crab is really delicious. But that earthy, iron-rich spinach is just too much against those lovely subtle flavours. The pastry parcel is a really nice idea with some good flavours in it. Unfortunately, waterlogged spinach and juicy peppers with it was not a good idea. Experimental cook Ben has made a crab quenelle served with prawns, chilli and noodles. Oh, Ben. The rubbery, gloopy textures of the noodles and the failed quenelle aren't good. They're not nice. Your prawns are cooked really, really nicely. The rest of it is just a mistake. Yeah, yeah. I'm really pleased. I think we've got some really good cooks. I'm quite impressed with Joe. I'm impressed with anybody who comes in and makes their own pastry. Yeah, you, when you hear that Joe's going to make your prawn and crab quiche, it was sort of, oh, really? Back to the 1970s? But the flavour inside was good. Joe stays. Ben had a nightmare. He was trying to make, like, crab quenelles, and they were just far too wet. The noodles then were a complete solid lump. That was awful from him today, awful. They sort of will realise that I had a bad day, but they, they've got to judge what I cooked, and I cooked an absolute load of rubbish. <laughs> I think Matt did very well. Great shortbread biscuits, nice little chocolate pot, and the daring to do something slightly different. Matt stays. Darren made a cheesecake, but it needed some fruit, and what he'd done is he'd, he'd overcooked the pear, so he had very little fruit. Darren's just lacking the skill, I think, right now. Darren goes home. That leaves us a conversation between Liz and Charlotte. I think Charlotte did her little parcels very, very nicely, and the subtle flavours of the crab and the prawn with the coriander was good. The issue she has, of course, is the spinach sitting alongside it. I want to go through so much more. I actually loved cooking in there. It's such a buzz being in there. I really enjoyed it. I thought Liz did really well. I mean, she was half soup, half noodle dish, John, but what really pleased me was how big she was with those flavours. It was a bit apprehensive of the flavours when I tasted it because I thought they were a bit too bold. 
But when I put it across to them and they said they actually liked it, I was sort of over the moon with that. Who is going to cook us food that we really, really love to eat? Ben, Darren, you're leaving us. Four of you left, and we can only take three. Charlotte, I'm sorry you're leaving us. Congratulations. Well done, you three. Fantastic. Over the moon. <laughs> Voice is shaking, I'm shaking, I'm just... Wanna crawl? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ecstatic. It's brilliant. I mean, it was really good for them to say that they liked any of my food, but to put me through as well is great. <laughs> I can't wait to phone my husband because he'll be so impressed and he will start to believe that I'm a good cook. We've got ourselves three exciting amateur cooks who are now going to cook in a professional kitchen. This is where we really ratchet up the pressure. This is where they get real heat. It's day two. Matt, Liz and Joe face their first test in a professional kitchen at Bistro 51, a popular French restaurant near Buckingham Palace. They will be working under executive chef Brian Henry. You are cooking the dishes to order. If it's not right, it is not coming out. We've got a very busy lunch, so if you'd like to follow me, let's get started. During the lunchtime service, Matt will be in charge of a starter of wood pigeon, scotch quail's egg, and a black pudding and raisin jus. Well, it's just making sure that everything's exactly right and exactly the same each time. I think that's going to be the challenge for me. Joe is cooking chicken breast on papillot with spiced mashed potato and French beans. Liz is taking on the tomato, spinach and cheese fondue served in a deep-fried pita bread cone. The only thing I'm worried about is, is the first couple of plates and the timings, but I think you don't know until you try, so just got to push through it. It's half past 12 and the restaurant is filling up. Check on. One pigeon salad. Yes, sir. The first order is for Matt's pigeon. Matt? Yeah. Season them before they go in the pan, please. Yeah. yeah. Right, Matt, I'll have the first pigeon up, please. Before serving it, he has to take it off the bone, and it should be slightly pink in the middle. Is that so, right? No, too raw, too raw. No, get them back in. Get them back in, please, yeah? It's this timing thing. You've got to be absolutely perfect every time. Joe, these main courses. They're coming, they're coming. About Please. Ten seconds, sir. Joe is next to feel the pressure, plating two of her chicken dishes. Joe? Yes, yes, chef. They're very small. Yeah. Everything on the inside the plate. Yes. Beans chef. are overcooked. Yes. Sorry, they both have to go back, yes. okay? Although Liz was last to get an order for her cheese fondue, she now has several on the go. When you've done that one... Yeah. I need another one up. Yes, no sir. peppers, please, yes, yeah? Sir. Thank you. It is a slow start for me, but they have all put at once, so it's a case of running around like I have this chicken now, which is fine. I'm loving it. Call me no peppers, chef. OK. That's yeah. very nice. The restaurant is now packed. And in the kitchen, they're feeling the heat. We're falling behind, guys. Can we just pick it up a gear, please, yeah? Joe is juggling chicken orders on the hob, in the oven and at the pass. Joe, you got one chicken for me, please? Um, How long for this chicken? As she gets more flustered, the orders fall behind. So what, shall I wait to do the beans after I've done everything else? What about your chicken here? Sorry? Put chicken there, please, yeah? I'm going to put that into the oven. And Chef has to take action. Jay? Yep. Can you assist Joe in plating up one chicken, please? Oh, well, I want it plated, yeah? All right, Chef. Thank you. He's called in reinforcements. Right, Matt, I really need that pigeon now. 20 seconds, sir. 
Matt's also in the spotlight. He needs to make up for his earlier undercooked pigeon. Matt, please. This is messy. All right. Relax. Yeah. All right. That one's OK. Spot the difference? Yeah, yeah. I want one like that, please, yeah? OK. Thank you. Over on the other side of the kitchen, Liz is staying focused on her cheese fondue orders. I've got into the swing of it now, so I know what I'm doing. Enjoying it still. Next one away, chef, yeah? yeah. Service, please. While Liz impresses, Matt's also hitting his stride. It's the best one you've done so far. After being bailed out earlier, Jo has four final chicken orders. It's her last chance to show she can get them out on her own. Four chicken, chef. Okay. Thank you. A bit late, but they're going out. There you go. Guys, thank you. That's it. Service is finished. Thank you. Thank you, chef. Liz, everything that came out was, was very nice. Good, consistent, solid worker. It was a lot tougher than I thought, but I think I managed to get control of my nerves and control of my adrenaline and I managed to get the plates out. Jo, um, she struggled. She struggled a lot. One stage, one of the guys had to help her out. It was really difficult, very challenging. I did get quite flustered, but I enjoyed it. Matt got better as the service went along. If he had a bit more confidence in himself, I think some of the plates wouldn't have gone back. I've really enjoyed it. It's, it's a tough old life, though. I'm not sure I could do this for that many hours every day. The contestants have now been on their feet for six hours, but there's no respite. Back at MasterChef HQ, they now have to produce their very best two-course meal. By your own skill, you have given yourself one fantastic opportunity to get yourself a quarterfinal place. Your two plates of food, one hour. Let's cook. Yesterday, jazz musician Matt stood out from the crowd with a left field pudding of chocolate and sweet chilli. Can he turn out an equally inventive dish today? What are you going to cook for us today, Matt? Uh, I am cooking chicken kind of two ways uh, on a bed of lentils with griddled pineapple for the second course with vanilla cream. You said you're taking this competition very, very seriously. Why, why is it becoming very serious for you? It's a passion of mine, food, and this is kind of a pinnacle of cookery. It just means a great deal to me, basically. We have creativity coming out of your ears in the first round and classic cooking in the second round. I didn't expect that. Birmingham-based Liz has performed consistently in both the invention test and the professional kitchen. Can she now outshine the others in order to win? Liz, how are you getting on? Not too bad, not too bad. One of my dishes is really, really simple. A peach and mozzarella salad. I'm also doing a lime and coriander salmon with soy and ginger cabbage. They are pretty simple, but it's the flavours that'll knock you for six, so... I think it'll be a taste sensation, maybe. <laughs> Liz is talking about unusual combinations and flavours that are going to blow us away. Well, they have to, because she's not demonstrating a great deal of cookery skill. Ladies and gentlemen, 30 minutes gone, you are halfway. Garden designer Jo, impressed by making her own pastry in the invention test, but fell behind in the pro kitchen. She has one final chance to make up lost ground. What are you going to cook for us, Jo? I'm making um, pork and caramelised fennel with vermouth and raspberry souffle. 
OK, and your love of food? When did you start cooking? About four or five years ago, when I got married to an Italian, I really started cooking properly. The Italian family, I cooked them traditional British roast turkey. They all were phoning all the other relatives saying, Linglazy, she knows how to cook, she cooks. We have pork, mashed potato, fennel and burma sauce. They are big, they are rustic, they have to be beautifully done. Ninety seconds left. Finishing touches. Time's up. Finished. For her starter, Liz has made a salad of mozzarella, peach, parma ham and rocket. Her main course is lime and coriander salmon with soy and ginger cabbage. I love the classic combination of salty ham, milky mozzarella cheese, peppery rocket and olive oil. I think that's absolutely wonderful. I don't believe peach has any place to play in a dish like that. Actually, the pepperiness, the honey sweetness of the fruit and the salty ham, I like. I think you've either got to go peach or mozzarella. Yeah. From peach salad, salmon and cabbage. Your salmon is cooked absolutely perfectly, but for me, there's far too much soy sauce in that cabbage and it's becoming really salty and that is overpowering the dish as a whole. Nice sweet salmon. I pick up a hint of ginger. I actually enjoy your flavours. What's concerning me throughout these dishes is the little amount of cookery yeah. on show. Joe has cooked a main course of pork marinated in herbs with fennel and vermouth, mashed potato and courgettes. Her dessert is a raspberry souffle. Your mashed potato is really smooth, your pork is really nicely cooked, but this needs a thicker, creamier sauce. For me, it needs to be more robust. It needs to have more guts to it. And it's all a bit wishy-washy. Okay. Now, souffle. It's light and fluffy, it's raspberry sharp, but not too sharp. It's nicely balanced, it's a good dessert. Thanks very much. I do question right now, in classic terms of a souffle, whether this really is a souffle. This here shows me that's all just meringue. Technically, I believe it's completely flawed. OK. Matt's main course is chicken breast stuffed with livers and a roasted chicken leg on lentils. His pudding is char-grilled pineapple with praline and vanilla cream. The texture of that roast piece of chicken in its fat, I like, but it doesn't have enough flavour. It's a bit big, it's a bit ugly, and it doesn't taste it very much. Sorry. There is a slight iron-like liver flavour running through that chicken, but that whole thing is teeteringly, dangerously towards bland. Let's try your uh, pineapple pyramid. Vanilla, cream, pineapple, rum, nuts, sugar, fantastic. But what I'm left with is this buttery, grainy taste of that whipped vanilla cream. I don't want to be rude to you, but it's just not. It's not lovely. There is so much juice in that pineapple. I feel I want to 
get a sticky sauce on there, something that will hold all those flavours in my mouth for longer. Going into today, I felt we had three cooks with real promise. And I've got to say, I think today was fairly disappointing. I'm pretty sure that Joe can deliver big, robust Italian dishes. I don't think that was her best today. I like the idea of Joe's pork chop with the fennel fronds, but she promised me a sauce made with vermouth, which means it left me feeling the dish wasn't complete. The fact that our dessert from Joe was supposed to be a souffle and what we actually got was a bit of meringue poached with some raspberry syrup, I don't think is good enough as a dessert. I was quite surprised how critical they were because I think that my dishes tasted fantastic and I just think it's strange, you know, their taste buds must be very different from mine. So I thought it was, it was nice. Liz took some big risks today. The idea of a big plate of salad without displaying any cookery skill at all I think is a really big risk. The salmon on top of the cabbage with a crunch, a little bit of ginger and soy. Again, it's showcasing such a small amount of cookery skill. That's the problem for Liz. I just hope that I haven't been too simple and shot myself in the foot. Matt's chicken dish looked too big, looked too scruffy, and it just hadn't packed enough flavour into it. When it came to the dessert, pineapple, rum, praline, it could have been fantastic. Instead, the cream itself was over whipped and almost like butter and just big and ugly. I can't tell you how much I went to win today. I think it's anyone's game at the moment. We just have to wait and see what John and Greg think. Which one of these three can make it as a quarter-finalist? Can one of these three make it as a quarter-finalist? The skill required to go further in this competition is amazing. Based on what the three of you cooked for us today, we do not believe that any of you are ready for a quarterfinal. I'm sorry, all three of you are leaving us. Bit shell shocked, kind of gutted, really. I think the dishes that I've managed to put in front of them were nowhere near good enough. I know I can cook, but it's just a case of basic errors. But it's not going to stop me from cooking at all. I feel I did really the best I could, but if it wasn't up to the level of some of the other contestants, so, you know, fair enough. MasterChef is one seriously tough competition which is only about the best cooks. I think these three have got talent, they just didn't show it today. And you've got to be able to turn it on when it matters. Liz, Joe and Matt are going home. But Joe and Amy will be back for the quarter-final.